everybody welcome to the swear corner for those joining us for the very first time welcome you all welcome my name is Orlunda for the first timers hey. you know I've been very open with you about my grief about losing my parents and all of that for those who have not watched their videos link up here go watch those we'll talk yeah don't want to get into the whole thing but it's been it's almost 12 months since losing my dad and almost about six months since losing my mom and I just wanted to share with you a few things that I have noted down in my journal um about lessons i've learned through my grief and maybe it will help you or whatever you're going through the number one thing that i must really talk to you here is I'm sorry for my words but damn it therapy is expensive <laughs> that's all i have to say about that part i don't understand how therapy can be this expensive therapy is expensive eight hundred dollars a session therapy is expensive this is why people just don't get help because why would you spend more than eight hundred dollars i mean eight hundred dollars each session on a therapist and most probably every week for like an hour why would you like honestly who in their right mind in this time i'm just like you have got to be kidding me therapy is expensive <sighs> so annoying we wonder why people walk around here with mental issues and all these issues it's because it's expensive to get help cheaper to mend here than help here <sighs> certain traditional rituals will rob you of your grief of, I'm basing this over my experience and basing it off of the traditional bamboo experience that I've had. Rituals are set up in such a way that things must be done so quickly. It's as if you're trying to get rid of someone who did something to you, like erasing them in a sense. A good example would be in the bamboo tradition. I don't know if everybody does it, but people, your family members come to your house that weekend maybe four days before but the Sunday after you've done the funeral you must pick up the room pick up the clothes of your loved one and put them out outside and then people then pick whatever they want to pick we are already coming to terms with the fact that the person is gone mind you I don't have the time to grieve that whole week because you're too busy running around fixing issues, making sure everything is done, whatever you need for the pasta, the police, the caskets, the undertakers, food, people are fed. You, while you're busy running around that whole week trying to figure all these things out as a family, so which means the Saturday is when you put your person night to rest. Now that day you're so tired, emotionally tired, physically tired, you are so tired, and then on Sunday you must already pack stuff. When all you want to do is sit in your grief for just a minute, and just sit there and just deal with the fact that your loved one is gone but they make you pack up things and people must take things and the siblings must take and all of that without thinking about the immediate kids you know you know what i mean i'm just clearly i'm venting today so i'm just stating that for me it was just one of those things i was like this is one of those traditional rituals I literally don't ever like I never share with my son so it's okay for the things to be the way that they are in the room that they are for about a week before people come in like we must pack those things away we must put these things there that person must take that you know like give the family like a week or two and then you can come back and say okay guys that ritual remember about packing things I think now we must pack things or at least ask the family when you're ready consensus then let's come in with the elders and then come pack things. They just make you pack things. It's like you know you're being traumatized all over again because now you know you must deal with taking the things out of the closet already while you are still dealing with the things that they just gone anyway. Let's go. I won't stop venting about that part clearly. <sighs> death number three. Death and grief make people uncomfortable. So you must be prepared for awkward encounters. People don't know how to treat you. You don't know how people will treat you. You don't know how will they, they be. You don't know whether you expect them. You ex they, they expect you to start crying when you see them. You don't know in what mood you should be. So just expect very awkward encounters with people, especially when you meet them for the first time after the whole loss. It's just going to be very awkward. 
the whole thing is awkward you don't even know what to talk about you don't know whether it's even okay to bring up certain topics you don't know how people will treat you when you bring up like jokey stuff you just don't know so prepare for those grief can make you question your faith it does make you question everything from the beginning to the end it does make you question the middle it makes you question life within itself it makes you question the idea about your faith it does but the thing about uh, um, your faith though is that after a while it also helps you go through it and that's at least what I'm learning with mine don't be alarmed that you're questioning your faith it's it's part of the grieving process you're going to be angry and I think if you cannot give your anger or your doubts to the maker of heaven and earth then who are you going to give it to I mean, he's the only one who can take your anger away, your sadness away, who can sit there with you within that time when you're feeling the way that you're feeling. He's the only one. And I don't believe people are saying you can't give your anger, you can't tell the Lord you're angry at them. You need to tell the Lord. He already knows, you're already thinking it. As long as you are not offending, disrespecting the Holy Spirit, God, what is the blaspheming the Holy Spirit or God within your anger, there shouldn't be a problem with you literally going to him. And giving it to him and be like i'm really angry i don't understand why you did this i also don't understand why this is happening and i'm like really sad in this moment do not downplay what you are feeling within your grief even if other people are going through it i made that note because within this time that my parents passed people are going through also their own grief because a lot are happening right now within this time with the COVID and all of the extra things people are just losing people but it does not mean you must listen what you feel. Other people going through what they're going through doesn't lessen the hurt that you're feeling. It doesn't lessen the fact that you've also lost someone and feel maybe, oh, I'm blessed because of maybe I have one parent left or I have siblings. No, don't downplay that part. That that person who left is that part of that of your life hurts. The culture we are trained to just go on, to just move, you know. At the end of the day, it ends up that we don't even then deal with the trauma that you're dealing with at the time or you don't get to grieve properly and so you, of course you don't deal with those emotions and then you carry them around in your entire life. You're acting the way you're acting as because you haven't dealt with the trauma that has happened in your life. So don't downplay whatever you're feeling just because I could also go through that thing. People love to judge how you are doing through your grief. So please look out for those people. Like she should be crying why isn't she crying she should not be laughing why should she be laughing right now or ah they spent so many years their parents they should already be moving on i mean they're adults this is expected uh watch out for those people take them out of your life immediately sometimes the people you think will be there for you will not and people you never expected will it just happens and that's basically all i have you must just i don't know what you must just mean in even in my case i don't know why one that is very painful is that every happy moment every happy moment will be replaced by immediate sadness that just washes over you you will have a good day a good joyful hour but it's like you go from 100 to zero real quick I don't know why is like you feel is, do you feel guilty that you're laughing in this time do you feel guilty like there's a sense of living with this grief but still have made happy moments i don't know what it is but i have experienced that and i experienced it a lot and mentally i've not prepared myself for that like every happy moment i'll be here having a good time let me just have a quiet time by myself and all the sad emotions come right like just rushing back like someone just opened a tab and the floodgates just come somehow being a very like introspective person figured out how to get in that moment and somehow get myself out i think it's, it's god i don't think it's me personally the next one would be you're going to have a lot of down days more than you're going to have up as in you're going to have a lot of sad days more than happy days a lot of sad moments more than happy moments you're going to feel more like I don't really want to wake up in the morning then oh it's a good day i'm looking forward to this day type of moment doesn't matter what your life looks like you're gonna have a lot of those it's not something that you should be alarmed about it's part of the grieving process especially if you love the person but you have to find a way to get yourself out of it one way or the other you have to get your a way to get yourself out of those dark days to get yourself into the right ones 
healing is as painful and rough and bruising and and confusing more than anything the road to healing is bumpy as you heal you realize some of those things habits you've picked up are things that you would need to break in order to live in like the healed state sarah jakes roberts is the one that says it very nicely i think what you had to become to survive you would have to change to be this healed person i'm paraphrasing and that really is the thing that really like ah we've done so many things to survive within the grief but in order to live in like the healed the healthier way of grieving living with the grief that doesn't go over like consume my life or my day or my thoughts or my feelings or now i react out of everything that is grief how i treat people is everything out of my grief or my trauma you have to change and break habits that you've learned to survive and those habits are going to be hard to break sometimes they're going to be painful because you're going to experience things that will force you to get out of that to get into this healed person to be okay so that nothing really becomes a trauma trigger a scent doesn't make you just want to break down a song someone says something when i hear talk, people talk about their parents or my mom said that or my dad it takes me a lot in that moment to like get out of it and be like okay with people talking about their loved ones because of the loved ones that i've lost it will never go away you know i mean that's the thing about losing people it's as if a leg has been amputated now it is you learning to live with the amputated leg how do you live with a limp inside that missing limb in such a way that it makes your life not feel like you've missed something but like even with the amputated i have something else to look forward to it's finding that direction basically oh and the one thing i actually forgot is you know sometimes you expect people i don't even know how to say this properly um it's something that i've learned you expect people around you to be sensitive to the fact that you've gone through this grief but because life goes on so quickly don't put your whole hundred percent assurance or confidence in the fact that people around you will look out for the fact that you your emotions or what you've gone through your mental state because people around you again they move on your friends move on and after a while your men your mental state is not your friends problems it's not their number one concern when they deal with you they don't look at you and think i should be a little bit more sensitive when i speak to a lunda for example because this your boss will not do it so don't put your confidence in that people will do that i did and i've learned the hard way that you don't some people will surprise you though you must hold on to those people who in the midst of it somehow sees you and keep your emotions in mind when they speak to you or when they deal with you or when they approach you but most people will not because at the end of the day the loss is yours it's not their loss it's your loss that part because how they deal with grief is not the way you deal with grief so they won't be sensitive to how you deal with it it's just you so you have to guard your heart very strongly <laughs> very protectively with every inch that you have in this moment because then things like that will disappoint you and make you like go back mentally yeah that's basically all i have to say about all of these things that i've learned this year what i've journaled i really hope it helps somebody if i haven't explained enough let's chat in the comment section um but if you've gone through the similar thing tell me what is one of the things that you've learned through your trauma or through your grief and what has helped you cope through your grief that will be another topic for another day um but yeah i thank you guys so much for watching thank you for your support and yeah i'll see you guys in my next video